Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I'm here to help you choose some great games for game night. So you might be familiar with the title Cryptid, which is a kind of deduction game where you're trying to figure things out. But now there is a two player only version released and I'm very curious to see how it stands up against the original. So here's five things I think you need to know about Cryptid Urban Legends. <laughs> Cryptids are things that we aren't quite sure they really exist. And in this game, you're either a scientist on the hunt for the elusive, or the cryptid trying to successfully escape. Using sensors, you'll prowl the streets. until the cryptid has nowhere to go or they can successfully make their escape. Will you be the hunter or the hunted? Thing one, what's this game all about? So before I jump into the theme here, we may as well discuss actually what is a cryptid. Um, and what a cryptid really means is that it's kind of rumors of something that exists but hasn't really been substantiated. So think stuff like the Loch Ness Monster, the Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot, that kind of stuff. And in the original cryptid game, you were using your deduction powers and asking questions of other players, trying to find out where on the board that the cryptid was located. So Cryptid Urban Legend carries on this theme a little bit, um, where you are indeed searching for a cryptid, um, but it's now located in the city streets. And you can play as either the cryptid trying to escape, or you can play as the scientist who's trying to capture the cryptid. Um, theme is pretty thin on the ground here. This is very much an abstract game. And this isn't really helped by the fact that you kind of track each other or avoid each other using sensor cubes um, as opposed to somehow doing it yourself. I think it kind of abstracts from the idea of you capturing something. And whatever bit of kind of theme you might hold on to, I think the use of like discs as markers and little cubes on the board really keep this in the realm of the abstract. Now, similar titles to this. Um, for me, it certainly has kind of an Onitama chess style vibe, right? Where you're trying to outsmart each other's moves um, to kind of get checkmate, as you will. So it definitely feels like that. But there is a hint of something more like Spectre Ops here, where you're trying to pin down an opponent's location. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Cryptid Urban Legends really is a hidden movement game. The one where you're trying to outsmart your opponent and prevent them from winning. Um, so there are two roles to play in this and they're both kind of different. So there's the scientist who's tracking down the cryptid and the cryptid who's trying to escape the scientist. Um, so what the scientist kind of has to do is to be able to limit the amount of places that the cryptid can have presence. And I'll use that term again in a minute and I'll explain it fully. But what that means for the scientist is that the game has a row of kind of seven spots in front of you and there will be a row beyond that. And what you're doing on your turn is you're using cards to move cubes from one row to another. Um, now, why would you do this? Why is this important? Well, the cubes come in three different colors. So there is a white, a red and a black. And what you need to do is, your, your cards also indicate this, is that you kind of move, move these cubes over to the other row. So you can split them so you can have all color in one places, you can divvy them around. But there is a very important reason for placing these cubes out in this way. And that's because you're trying to prevent the cryptid having presence. So how the cryptid wins is, well, you guessed it, you're having presence, but specifically at either end of the row. And what they do on their turn is that they can say, um, they basically they combine colors and numbers to find somewhere like thema like connected for them to have present. They can also split them up in different colors and things like that too. And so you as the scientist are trying to place your color cubes out in such a way that it's difficult for them to string together connections on their turn and to win. 
Um, this is entirely compounded by the fact that the Cryptid also gets to move cubes on their turn to kind of stop you from winning. Um, and the Cryptid also wins if they're able to place enough um, of these presence tokens out as well as at the ends. Um, so that's kind of what the game is about. It's a very much a cat and mouse style thing where you're trying to outsmart each other at every move. Um, I found it difficult to explain and to kind of understand the concept for quite a while of what I was trying to achieve here. Um, but it really is kind of an interesting feel where it's very much like a checkmate moment. Thing three on the table. Well, Cryptid Urban Legends doesn't really have much of a table presence. It's, it's kind of tiny. It is just a series of cards placed out with some cubes and you have your hand. Um, I would go so far as to say that you could nearly play this without a table. So that's good on the table size count. It's also very quick and easy to set up and kind of get going. There's not that many components to it. Um, rule book wise, I think the rule book was good, but I think the concepts here are difficult. It took me a number of plays to really wrap my head around what was happening and what I, you know, what was necessary to be doing. Um, it took about 20 minutes for two of us to play. And I think some of that to do is to do with my lack of skill at these type of games, because I really didn't put up much of a fight. So this might go on a little bit longer if you have um, ev evenly matched opponents. Um, okay, so replayability here. Well, this is feels like a chess style game. So yeah, you're going to play the same game each time, but it's going to be different because of the strategies you're going to employ. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, initially I was simply surprised by how small the box is, like compared to Cryptid here, it's, you know, it's, it's tiny. So yeah, that was a bit of a shock. Um, but beyond that, I will say that the box art is lovely and the art in the game itself is very cool. It's very kind of fun, spooky vibes. Um, and I liked it quite a bit. Um, otherwise, the components in here are kind of on the fancy side for such a small game. You've got these really nice cubes, you get these really nice things. And of course, there's an insert, which also was surprising for such a small box. Um, yeah, overall, this game is kind of nicely put together. It's a small package, but what's in there is good. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So I have to start this review by talking about the original Cryptid, because this was a game that... I shouldn't have liked, but I really loved. It was a deduction puzzle, it was a logic puzzle, um, but somehow really knocked it out of the park. I had so much fun playing that. So when I heard there was a two player only cryptid game coming out, yeah, I was really excited. This sounded like all of my dreams had come true at once. Um, but as you may have noticed throughout this review, Cryptid Urban Legends has very little to do with cryptid. Um, yeah, it's got its name and a little bit of its theme, but this is a completely different kettle of fish. Um, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, and that's because I'm not a fan of these kind of cat and mouse style games. Um, I had a hard time just wrapping my head around a lot of the concepts here. And I think that's in part because firstly, your moves really aren't necessarily to benefit you. They're to simply stop someone else from doing something. Um, and I found it hard to approach a game in that kind of negative space, in that kind of negative way. Um, but not only that, if you want to win, you basically need to funnel someone else so that they have no other options of where to go. You really have to take control of the board. Um, and I found that a difficult thing to master. Um, so yeah, I didn't have fun playing this puzzle, but I don't think it's the type of game that's for me. But that doesn't mean it's not for you. This is a very kind of well thought out, very thinky abstract game in which you are really trying to, yeah, outsmart your opponent. Um, and it really does have a chess style vibe to it because the puzzle morphs as you play. Um, you can't stick with the same strategy you had at the start because you're forever interacting with somebody else and all of the cubes move around and such. Um, so yeah, it definitely feels like that. I, I think this is an interesting addition to that genre of those style of puzzle games. And this one is reasonably priced to boot. Um, so yeah, I didn't necessarily have fun playing this, but I think lots of people will. Um, yeah, this is a pretty interesting puzzle game, just not for me. So do I think you should have Cryptid Urban Legends in your collection? 
I think if you're looking for a quick and puzzly experience where you'll end the game feeling really, really smart if you've won, then you should absolutely check this out. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about cryptid, urban legends, why not shout them off in the comment box below? Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.